peace be with you. Please share the readings today to your friends and loved ones. You might just bless a soul who urgently needs to hear God's message at this very moment. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let us now all listen to today's Gospel readings. We are now in the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time and our Gospel today can be considered the heart of St. Luke's Gospel as it conveys his core message about God's merciful love especially towards the poor, the sick, the outcasts, and sinners. St. Luke intensifies this by presenting the three parables of the lost sheep, coin, and son that depict a God who not only takes the initiative in seeking out the lost, but also greatly rejoices when they have been found and returned to his embrace. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone, then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm. I will rise and go to my Father. Response. I will rise and go to my Father. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Response. I will rise and go to my Father. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Response. I will rise and go to my Father. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice. O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. Response, I will rise and go to my Father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these I am the foremost. But for that reason I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. 
to the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman having ten coins and losing one would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him, and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead, and has come to life again. He was lost, and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf, he said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord A pleasant day to everyone. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, on this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, united by our faith in Christ, 
we have gathered in the presence of our Lord who is merciful and compassionate. This is the summary of this Sunday's message. Today, the Church offers us another golden opportunity to reflect on God's mercy and compassion. This is fully revealed in His Son Jesus Christ. One important fact that runs through all the readings of this Sunday is the readiness of God to welcome and receive us irrespective of how much we have fallen and gone away from Him. The first reading from the book of Exodus is about the great sin of idolatry by the Israelites. While Moses was in Mount Sinai receiving the law from God, the people made a molten calf and worshipped it. God was very angry. But Moses pleaded with him. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. This episode clearly exhibits God's overflowing mercy for sinners, no matter how grave their sins are. A very important lesson we must learn from this reading is the power of intercession for both ourselves and for others. Like Moses, the Christ we celebrate today, relentlessly continues to intercede for us every day. This is especially at the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. So, we must not be tired of interceding for one another and for our world before our merciful and compassionate Lord. So, we must approach Him in prayers always, reminding Him of His promises as Moses did. The psalm is David's song of repentance, imploring God's mercy and forgiveness. The response is the prodigal son's resolution. I will rise and go to my father. In the second reading, Paul reminds us that, like himself, we are all products of God's mercy. In this reading Paul recounted how his salvation was made possible through the intercession and mercy of Christ. Hence, like Paul, let us take advantage of this same saving mercy of God for our eternal salvation. Let us also be grateful to Him, who shows us mercy through Christ. The Gospel reading contains three parables that have similar message. They all talk about being lost and being found. The lost sheep, the lost coin and the lost son. These parables illustrate God's infinite mercy and His desire to seek, find and save the lost. He wants all men to be saved. He waits patiently for our return to His loving arms. Also in today's Gospel, Christ was accused of welcoming sinners and through His action and parables, He demonstrated how merciful and compassionate He is towards us. In spite of our sins and stubbornness, Christ is willing to welcome us back to Himself. Each day, He beckons us. Come let us settle the matter. Even though your sins are as red as crimson, you shall be as white as snow. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 to 19. Through his merciful and compassionate heart, he is ready to make all things new for us again. It does not matter what it will cost him. In summary, all the readings bring up one important message. We are sinners, and we were lost in sin. But God looks for us patiently and diligently. He never wants any one of his children lost forever. He is willing to go out of his way and even to suffer and die so that we can be saved. So, like the prodigal son, it is time to accept this invitation. It is time to return to the merciful and compassionate Lord whose mercy surpasses his judgment and wrath. God has made our return very easy through Jesus Christ. So, all we need is to realize ourselves. Sincerely, and humbly we must make a very important decision like the prodigal son. I will leave this place and go back to my father. We must not be ashamed to return to God our Father because, His steadfast love never ceases, and His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning, and great is His faithfulness. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 to 23. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please help spread the word of the Lord by sharing this video. Again, thank you and may God bless us all always.